Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Today we're going to be sublimating wind spinners. I have here two wind spinner sublimation blanks from Hobby Lobby. They are eight inches wide. The images we're going to use are two different images that I designed on Bing AI. They are printed on a sub sublimation paper with my sure color f170 epson sublimation printer obviously we're going to be working with sublimation so we have our cricut easy press mat i have my heat resistant gloves my heat resistant tape we'll be using my htv ron auto heat press and before we get started with that, we're going to need to clean our blanks. So I have isopropyl alcohol, a lint-free cloth. I'm using a coffee filter, and I have a lint roller. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using wind spinner sublimation blanks from Hobby Lobby. They come with the wind spinner and also the hardware to hang them so that's really nice on the back of the packaging it says to remove the protective film before sublimating so we'll do that um, it also gives a time temperature and pressure suggestions for sublimating this um, i don't know as i will be following this we'll see what happens after the first one uh, the temperature says for 392 degrees and sublimating it for 190 seconds. That just sounds kind of excessive to me. Um, but like I said, I'll do the first one and then see what happens from there. So the first thing we want to do is remove the protective film. We did just trim most of my nails today, so I don't know how easy this is going to be. Oh, there it goes. So we want to make sure we get all of this. And as we're doing this, we want to be careful not to bend the wind spinner out of proportion until we're finished. All right, so we have the, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the first side finished. So let's go ahead and get the film off of this second side. And because I'm struggling with this, I'll go ahead and speed through this. So you don't have to sit here and watch this. Okay, that took me a few minutes to get off, but the protective cover is now off of both sides. You can see how shiny it is. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we get this clean. So I will use my isopropyl alcohol and my baby wipe, or I'm sorry, my coffee filter. Okay, we will let that dry. And because I have the ceiling fan on, that doesn't take long. Now I will just use a lint roller to make sure I get everything off. Whoops. <laughs> okay, well that's not supposed to happen. Oh, for crying out loud. Holy cow. Okay, well, let's just do it this way then. <laughs> okay. So, because of that, I can see I have some residue left on here. From the lint roller. So I'm going to get my coffee filter back out, see if I can't get that off. And then we won't do that again. So, 
lesson learned. That was interesting. <laughs> that was very interesting. Okay, so now we need to choose our design. Uh, let's go ahead and work with this one first. The way I printed it was with Word. And I'll go ahead and insert a little clip on how I did that right here. To print your sublimation design in Word, open a new document and move your margins all the way to the left and the right. Click Insert Picture from this device. Locate the picture that you want to use. And click Insert. Change the dimensions as needed. Click File, Print, select your sublimation printer, go to Print Properties, make sure your paper type is for a rigid material, your quality is high, go to More Options, ensure that Mirror Image is on and Bidirectional Printing is off, click OK and print your design. Okay, so that's how I got this image printed. So now we will go ahead and get our image lined up. Now it, these wind spinners do have holes on the top and bottom. So you can hang them, you can dangle something from the bottom, you could string multiple wind spinners together. Either would be perfect. I am going to, well, okay, so this design already has a circle. So I'm going to try and line it up with that circle. And we will get it as straight as possible and try not to scratch the image. Get it even on both sides, approximately. Pardon my head if it gets in the way. And now we're just going to tape our design down. I'm going to try only taping it in three sections. So I'll be able to lift this up and look at it after I pressed it the first time. I want to make sure that I do have enough heat for enough time. Um, so let me go ahead and rearrange the craft room and I will get my HTV Ron Auto heat press turned on and I'll be back with you in a moment. All right, so I have everything turned around a little bit. Um, the directions again for the wind spinner from Hobby Lobby says a temperature of 392 degrees for 190 seconds. Um, that 190 seconds seemed really excessive to me. So I went on to the Jennifer Maker Sublimation Facebook group and asked the question. Um, a lot of people suggested 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I will set my temperature for 400 degrees and my time for 60 seconds. And then we will go ahead and let this heat up and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so we are up to temperature, 400 degrees. Um, because there is so much of the sublimation ink that's hanging off of the image that we're sublimating, um, I decided to take a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. Um, I just put that down as a bottom layer. And then I will put down my butcher paper. I am going to carefully turn over my image. And then another piece of butcher paper on top. And then we will sublimate this for 60 seconds.
Okay, we're down to the last few seconds. As always, when I am sublimating, I like to hold my butcher paper down while the heat press goes up. And then we will take it out. And I just, I just want to take a quick peek. So I'm going to hold this down and just take a look. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. So I'm always nervous taking it off. I don't want any ghosting to happen. But let's just give it a try. Oh, no, that is a little bit light. So here is what's left. And I will carefully hold this up so you can see it. So while it is beautiful, it is definitely not dark enough. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool off. And then I will get the second side lined up. And we'll uh, change, the, change the time, definitely. I, the temperature is good. Um, it definitely needs more time. So we're back. And... I have another piece of scrap of paper down and then I will put down my butcher paper. I will put that down again. My butcher paper is coming down towards the end of the rolls, so it is stubborn sometimes. So we'll put the second piece on, make sure everything's still lined up, and then run it back through the HDB auto heat press. Now I still have this set for 400 degrees, but I upped the time to 90 seconds. So it'll either be perfect or it'll be overdone. So I'll be back with you in about 76 more seconds. All right, six seconds left to go. So I'm going to go ahead and grab hold of my butcher paper and then slide it out. So I can see more of the image through the paper, through the A sub paper. Um, I'll go ahead and just lift a corner. Oh, that already looks so much better. So let's just go for it. Yeah. So there is that piece of paper. And there is that side. So as you can see, quite a bit of difference. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my machine off. Let this cool down. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and just do the other wind spinner. And then I'll be back with you at the end to show you the final results. Okay, so I have my second design in here. It's ready to go. So I will just pop that in. And I did up the temperature. Or No, I'm sorry. I left the temperature at 400. I did up the time to 100 seconds. We'll see how that turns out. All right, once again, we're down to the last five seconds. So I'm going to hold my paper and then bring it out. So take a quick little peek here. And I don't know. Huh. That might have been too long, but it is pretty. Okay, so time to let this cool off and we'll finish that up. And I'll be back with my final thoughts. 
Okay, so we are done with the sublimation process, and now let's take a look and see what we have. Um, here is the first wind spinner I did. Um, as you can see, 400 degrees for 60 seconds is not nearly enough time. Um, the let's see. Okay, here is the image, and you can see there is still quite a bit of ink left on that page. So on side number two, I sublimated this for 90 seconds and there is a lot more ink that transferred to the wind spinner, but it's still not quite as bright as it could be, I think. So I went ahead and I did my other wind spinner and it's still just a little bit warm. So here, let's see, I still have tape on there. So here's the first image. Um, I sublimated this at 100 seconds. And there is what that side looks like. And then the second side of this wind spinner I did for the recommended 190 seconds. As, as you can see, it took off probably all of the ink that was on here. And this is what that side looks like. And it's beautiful. Um, I did compare this image, well, the, the first side, to the image that's on my laptop. And because I wasn't sure about these lighter spots. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the way the image looked. But this side is just so much nicer. So, if you sublimate Hobby Lobby wind spinners, the correct time and temperature is 400 degrees for 190 seconds. So, lesson learned. So, the other thing about wind spinners is when they are in direct sunlight, they will fade. Um, that is the case for any wind spinner that you buy. Uh, so it's recommended to spray this with a UV protectant spray. I don't have any of that right now. Um, I'll go ahead and post a link and a, and a picture to what everyone else seems to be recommending for that. But uh, yeah, this is, it's turned out really nice. I like this. I really do like it for 190 seconds. Um, another thing you might notice for this image, I mirrored one side and I did not mirror the other side. So one thing about that is when you're lining it up, so you've got your first image lined up, and then when you're lining up your second image, let's see it be this way then you can see that everything matches. So you can follow your little lines, and then that way your front will be matched up with your back. So now the only thing left to do is to turn this into a wind spinner. And I'm not 100% sure how to do this, so we are learning together. Um, but I think... We push, push up with our fingers and push down with our thumb to get that started. And then we fan these out. And I'm holding in the stable portion and pushing that direction. I read somewhere what the, a good number is what a good angle, and I just don't remember what that was. So let's see, these have to come up, I think. Or maybe I'm doing it backwards. I don't know, I just don't know. So we'll see. I will get this part figured out. But yeah, so I think it's something like that. Yes, no, maybe, maybe not, maybe, huh, I, I, 
obviously have no idea how this part works. So I, we are learning this part together. So I will go ahead and get this strung up. And I will find a nice spot in the yard and see what it looks like hanging up. So let's go check it out. Even this two-ton wind spinner looks beautiful out in the yard. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.